here's what I make my kombucha in. A ceramic container with a spigot that I got from getkombucha.com. I pulled out all my other scobies, so I left this one in here. Actually, it's a nice healthy one. It's about that thick. My container is a, I think it says a two gallon container, but I know that I can only put in a gallon and a half of tea. So there's a gallon and a half of tea or water heating up. Here's the tea that I use. The directions are two tablespoons of tea per every gallon of water. So I have a gallon and a half. Obviously I need three tablespoons. It's going to go in that little muslin bag and it will flavor the tea as soon as I have snail eyes happening in there. Um, they're just tiny little dots now. So it doesn't have to come to a full boil, just hot enough that you have the little bubbles that look like snail eyes in there. Three tablespoons put in the little bag. I use their caffeine-free tea. Um, I actually like their other one better, but this one does a good job. They have a regular one that's a black tea blend and it's got a good flavor, but I'm gonna use all this up. The next time I order, I'll probably get their original blend. This will go in there as soon as we have more heat. So you can see little snail eyes down there. Tea doesn't have to be boiling. In fact, it could be where you can touch it and not, where it's like just where you want to pull your finger out. It's not excruciating. That's enough heat to brew the tea and it'll be quicker to cool down. So no point in overheating. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes that this has been um, soaking, seeping, steeping, excuse me. I'm just gonna squish that out, remove the bag, and then we'll be able to add our honey. So honey conversions, um, usually this tea calls for sugar or organic cane sugar was, was what I was using, but I wanted to go with something healthier and I like the taste of honey. So um, this one calls for one cup of sugar per gallon of water. I have a gallon and a half of water with honey. Use three-fourths the amount of, um, in converting, three-fourths the amount of honey to sugar. So instead of one cup, I would have used three-fourths of a cup of honey, but since I have a gallon and a half, I end up with one cup of honey. This is my favorite local honey from Redmond. And we just add this to the tea. One of the benefits of not having your tea boil and where you can still touch it and put your finger in means that it's quicker to cool down and get to the point where I can add the honey. If your water is too hot, like over 110 degrees, you'll effectively kill your honey, kill the enzymes and beneficial um, properties of the honey. So. It all works fine, just not heating things up and we'll get to it quicker. I'm gonna stir this in and then I will pour it into my kombucha container. One tip if the honey is sticking to the inside of your cup, I do a rinse to just get all the honey out because don't ever want to waste any of that liquid gold. All right, once the honey is all dissolved into your tea, then you can pour it into your container. to pour my tea into my kombucha container or whatever jar, glass jar that you happen to be using. Since I can't hold the phone and pour at the same time, you'll see the after. Okay, now we have our tea in the container. Uh, with the original black tea that I started with, I liked a ferment of about 10 to 12 days. With this caffeine-free variety, it seems to be a less, less robust flavored tea. Um, I'm liking 14 days on the fermentation. So after 14 days, I pull it off into jars, add some flavorings. This one happens to be um, strawberry mixed, sweetened with some honey because I wanted to take a little bit of the tartness out of the strawberries. This one is honey and cinnamon, one of my favorite um, combinations. This time I'm trying cinnamon sticks. Usually I would just use ground cinnamon, but I'm gonna see how this works. Um, this one I don't have a flavor on yet. I'm going to go get some rosemary um, 
and try some herbal blends. I've never done that before, and I thought that would be something interesting to see if I like rosemary and, and lavender buds um, in it. Uh, but we'll see how that comes out. Then this is um, what they call the second ferment when you flavor it. Um, generally, it go. Um, this will sit for a few days like this. The lids are loose because that does build up carbonation and could break your jars if it's screwed on tight. So this needs to be um, able to vent because this kind of glass is not the um, tempered glass. I'll show you one of the those this bottles. is a Grolish style bottle. These bottles um, are intended for home brewing, brewing and have really thick tempered glass so that the carbonation can build up and not break the glass bottle. So um, this is just a temporary housing. I'll give that a few days to flavor it. I will um, run it through a colander or strainer to take the sediment and the chunks out and then use a funnel and bottle them up here into, into bottles, um, attach the lids, build up the carbonation um, for a couple more days and then put them in the fridge and they're ready to drink. For placement, the kombucha needs to brew in a warm area of the house, typically next to a refrigerator is good because heat comes out of the back um, of the refrigerator and creates a little bit warmer co of a corner. So um, around 70 degrees seems to be a good brewing temperature. I also have a seed mat back here that's plugged in. If my house feels cold and bend, of course, higher elevation, we have um, dry climate and it gets chilly here. So my house, I keep it about 68 degrees, but it varies depending on you know, the day outside. And I also have other ferments going. There's sauerkraut um, fermenting in there, and this is apple cider vinegar that's um, fermenting, making those. So this corner is just kind of my, my fermenting station, and I will um, plug that in and unplug it as, it's, as the weather changes. Um, so there you go. It's that easy. You do need to put a cloth over your container because it does have to breathe. It needs oxygen. Uh, and you want to keep bugs and dust um, out of there. Just like the apple cider vinegar, it just has this cheesecloth um, held, but it can also breathe. Um, sauerkraut is um, a different game. It's you, We want to keep the oxygen out of there so we don't get mold. Um, so that's um, a different topic.